right, this video today is gonna to go over the basics of asphalt roof install. And hopefully this video will help you decide if asphalt is a good fit for your property. Now, felt paper is the underlayment that goes underneath the shingles. And majority of contractors still use this, actually. And it rips, it retains moisture, it actually bonds down to the roof decking, and it doesn't allow the wood to breathe properly. So we automatically upgrade every roof system that we do to a synthetic underlayment. This is virtually indestructible and is definitely a great second line of defense underneath the shingles to protect the roof from any water penetration. Here we have the gutter apron. Before we install ice and water shield, we like to install the gutter apron. Whenever the gutters are filled up with water, the gutter apron will prevent water from seeping into the building. The way that we like to install this is the hangers are flush with the apron. Whenever you see it installed over the hanger, that will allow a gap here and then water to seep into the building. After we install the felt paper and the ice and water shield, we like to install the drip edge. Essentially, the drip edge will always prevent water from seeping into the building. So ice and water shields, where you want to install them is along any type of eave, any valley on a roof, and any type of roof termination point along the roof. So after we remove the current existing flashing here, what we want to do is add this ice and water shield at least six inches up the wall before we add a new existing flashing. So ice and water shields is extremely important, especially in cold climates, because what this is going to minimize is any type of damage from ice damage. When installing starter strip, we install starter strip along the eaves and the rakes of the home, as these are most vulnerable from wind. When installing the shingle, we install the shingle with the slide overhang. The problem is, without installing the starter strip, the shingle is not gonna stick to the roof. This right here is the step flashing. What we wanna do is install it in between each course of shingle of the roof. The reason why we do so is because we wanna prevent any kind of water from accessing the termination points of the roof. After installing the step flash, what we want to do is apply a self-adhesive tape preventing any kind of water from reaching behind the step flashing. This right here is the kick-out flashing. What it does is diverts all the water away from the wall and into the gutters, preventing any kind of water from reaching the building envelope. In order to get the most life out of your roof, you want to make sure you have adequate exhaust ventilation. So right now, we're in the middle of doing a ridge vent install, which means we're not going to be adding turtle vents or power fans because if you have mixed ventilation, it can uh, interrupt your roof's ability to exhaust properly. So not only do we need to make sure that we have adequate exhaust on your roof, we need to make sure you have proper intake in your soffit. Now, the purpose of soffit intake is to pull air from outside into the attic space so they can exhaust from the roof. Because not a lot of people know this, the proper attic temperature should be very similar to the temperature outside. One of the most vulnerable spots in your home is actually one of the most critical spots to protect. This is your ridge cap up here. Now, 90% of the times when I'm doing these inspections, I'll see homes that are only using one ply thick recycled shingles running along their ridge cap. A better alternative to that would be to use TimberTex or Sealer Ridge products. By using these products, they are a multi-layer thick shingle specifically designed to sit up here and provide protection from wind. Hopefully you enjoyed the video today. And if you have any more further questions or concerns, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'll be happy to help.